Is the Dart Zone Pro Mark 1.2 tournament ready out of the box? I've been putting this video off for months. There's so much that's happened with this blaster in the community that it's hard to come into this review without my perspective being shifted by all the experiences of players that have been shared. But here we are. I want to be clear that while I always aim to review something objectively, there's always the opportunity for something to impact my perception despite my best efforts. So keep that in mind and always, always watch multiple reviews from different sources for anything you're considering buying. Let's talk performance first. The FPS numbers were right in a good place for King of the Hill tournaments, which are a 200 FPS cap currently, and the blaster sits around a 190 average with both AF Pros and Worker HEs. But if you go with the included bamboo darts, you jump up to a bit over 210 FPS average due to those darts being lighter. That FPS with bamboo darts puts it in a bit of a middle ground where it's too high for King of the Hill, but almost 40 FPS under the cap for most popular flag push game modes, which is 200. 150 FPS. When we get to groupings, we start to have issues. While with the bamboos, the groupings at 40 feet aren't bad, with other darts there seems to be a lot more turbulence coming out of the barrel, leading to wider groupings. A scar or B car could fix some of that, but as with every blaster in this review series, I'm only using what's provided. As with most blasters, if you put work into it, you can get it to a good place, but not everyone wants to do that or has the time to do so. And when we jump out to 75 feet, nothing looks good. This was actually really surprising to me. I didn't anticipate this degree of spread, but it was definitely disappointing. The other side of performance has some concerns as well. Consistency and reliability are crucial, and with jams being a common occurrence both with Talon and Dart Zone mags, and some of them being severe enough at times to require pulling the pins out of the blaster and separating the two halves just to get to the jam dart and remove it. So this is absolutely something to keep in mind about this blaster when considering it. There are ways to resolve or lessen the issue if you are willing to open the blaster up and mod it, but out of the box, it's a problem. I will say the build quality for the most part feels good. The only real complaint I have about the fuel of the blaster is that the stock is flimsy for the sake of giving it the gimmick of folding and attaching to the body of the blaster, which is not worth the trade-off on a blaster marketed as a pro line offering. Thankfully, it is removable and there's a standard end strike stock point underneath, so you can easily replace it. Otherwise, the plastic feels good, the grips feel nice, and I'm not concerned about being rough with it in games. There are some other small things that I think fall under minor or personal preference issues here, like the fact there's no depriming the blaster, the pusher is the skinny pusher so you can't swap mags with the breech closed, and the continued use of a full-sized mag well forcing the use of an adapter for short darts. These are the kind of things that may be mildly inconvenient or annoying, but unless there's a bunch of them piling up, they aren't going to deter me from a blaster on their own. What this all comes down to in the end for me though is the reliability. I just can't have a blaster that jams as much as this blaster does out of the box. Now I have to acknowledge that there's been a variety of experiences with this blaster. Some people having no issues and others having tons. So that's something to keep in mind here as well. I'm just not a fan of the idea that the reliability of your blaster will essentially come down to a roll of the dice on what you get. Combine that with the lackluster groupings I experienced and I think there's no other option for me but to say that the Dart Zone Pro Mark 1.2 is not tournament ready out of the box.